The notion of a sampling distribution can be applied to various characteristics of a population, but we will primarily be interested in a sampling distribution of a mean, which is obtained from taking the means of several samples of the same size. To illustrate the behavior of a sampling distribution of a mean, we will work with a simple example of rolling a six-sided die. This experiment has six possible outcomes, each with equal probability, so it follows what is called a uniform probability distribution, which is any probability distribution that assigns the same probability, in this case 1 6, to each outcome. For a discrete uniform distribution, we have formulas for the mean and variance in terms of the minimum and maximum possible outcomes, which are denoted here by A and B. In the case of a six-sided die, we therefore have a mean of 3.5 and a variance of 3. To obtain our sampling distribution of a mean, we select a sample size n and roll the die n times and take the average of all n outcomes, which we denote by x bar. If we repeat this process m times to obtain m sample means, we can visualize the sampling distribution of a mean by displaying these sample means in a histogram. Here is that histogram for the case of a very small sample size, n equals 2. We can see that the sample means are not uniformly distributed like in the original experiment of a single die roll, but most values are fairly well represented in this histogram. Now let's try again with increasing sample sizes. As the sample size n increases to 5, then 10, then 20, we find that the sampling distribution of a mean becomes more like a normal distribution, bell-shaped, more symmetric, and centered around the mean of the original experiment, 3.5. This behavior actually occurs with any sampling distribution of the mean. According to the central limit theorem, as the sample size n increases, the sampling distribution of a mean converges to a normal distribution. Even if a probability distribution of a population from which the samples are taken is not normal. Furthermore, the mean of this normal distribution converges to the true population mean. The central limit theorem also states that as n increases, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of a mean is approximately the standard deviation of a population, sigma, divided by the square root of a sample size n. We refer to this standard deviation of a sampling distribution of a mean, sigma x bar, as the standard error of a mean. Because the sampling distribution of a mean behaves like a normal distribution for which the mean and standard deviation are known, we can readily estimate the probability that the sample mean falls within a given interval, which is a cornerstone of inferential statistics in which conclusions about a population are made from samples. To illustrate how to compute the probability of a sample mean falling within a given interval, we return to our example of a six-sided die. If we use a sample mean of n equals 20, then by the central limit theorem, the sampling distribution of a mean behaves like a normal distribution, with mean 3.5 and standard deviation given by the standard error of a mean, which is sigma equals the square root of 3 over the square root of n, which equals 20. So, if we want the probability that the sample mean will be greater than 4, we can compute the z-score for 4, which is obtained by shifting 4 by the mean, and then scaling by 1 over the standard error of the mean, which gives us a z-score of 1.29. Then, we can use a normal distribution table on this z-score, and basic properties of probability, to obtain the probability we're after. The sampling distribution of a mean is not the only sampling distribution of interest. If we are studying a characteristic of a population that is binary in nature, then we can take samples of a population and compute the proportion of that sample that has a certain value of that characteristic, such as a proportion of a sample of voters that agree with a ballot measure. Now, because of the binary nature of this characteristic and the assumed independence of members of a population, the set of outcomes of these sample proportions which is called the sampling distribution of a proportion, actually follows a binomial distribution. However, if a sample size is large enough, then, as we have seen previously, this binomial distribution can be well approximated by a normal distribution. The mean and standard deviation of this normal distribution should be the mean and standard deviation of a binomial distribution divided by the sample size n, because we are not measuring successes,
Rather, we are measuring the percentage of successes, which is the number of successes divided by the sample size. It follows that if p is the true population proportion, then the mean of a sampling distribution of a proportion should be p. And a standard deviation should be square root of p times 1 minus p over n, which is called the standard error of a proportion. However, if p is unknown, then we need to use the sample proportion, p sub s, in its place as an approximation. As an example, suppose we estimate through sampling that 60% of California voters support a particular ballot initiative. By using a large enough sample size, like n equals 100, we can justify using a normal distribution to study the sampling distribution of a proportion, rather than a binomial distribution. We then use our sample proportion, 0.6, for the mean of a sampling distribution of a proportion, and also use this value to compute the standard error of a proportion, since it's the only measure of a population proportion that we have. We can then use this normal distribution to estimate the probability that our next sample will have a sample proportion greater than 65% by computing a z-score for 0.65 using the mean and standard deviation of our sampling distribution of a proportion, and then using this z-score with a standard normal distribution and basic probability properties to obtain this probability. Given that the sample proportion is 0.6, and the standard error of a proportion is a little less than 5%, and that by the empirical rule, 68% of a sample proportion should fall within one standard deviation of a mean, it's not surprising that this probability is not very high.